المشكلة الباري علام الأخباري من كل جباري يحارب الملاك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Nice to see you guys. Uh, I'm sorry, I came in a little later than usual. Uh, I had something unexpected happen. I had to take my son to the uh, emergency room, but alhamdulillah, he's doing okay, inshallah. Uh, so inshallah, uh, for the next two weeks, this week and next week, uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, inshallah. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, basically doing a workshop on public speaking. Uh, this is something that a lot of people, it's... This is a big uh, thing that it's very difficult for them. Um, that I don't know if this is true, but it's, it's something that is widely uh, shared. They say that the number one thing that people are afraid of is public speaking, even before death, actually. Um, whether this is true or not, or true for Muslims, Allahu uh, Adam, I think it probably depends on the individual. But one of the, it is true that one of the number one things people fear is uh, speaking in front of, uh, of groups of people. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little bit and that anxiety, um, some things we can do to overcome that. Basically because most likely we're going to split this up into two uh, sessions uh, and I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, what we're going to discuss probably here in this one is how to prepare, how to properly prepare to deliver and then next week inshallah we'll talk about how to deliver uh, effectively, right? Um, because there's some people they might prepare decently, but then they have no idea how to deliver. Right? And you have other people who don't, they know how to deliver, but they haven't prepared and they make a fool out of themselves. Okay? So we're going to talk about a few of those things. So let me just ask you guys, why do you think public speaking is such a big thing for a lot of people? Why is it something that a lot of people are, are afraid of? Go ahead. Because they may feel shy. They might feel shy. Okay, but what would, what would make them feel shy? Why would they be so afraid uh, to but speak in public. Go ahead. Sir, because sometimes uh, if uh, they are speaking time, they can uh, get some mistakes. Okay, maybe they're worried about mistakes. Good. So, one uh, other. Uh, more publics. Okay, they're, they're in the public eye. The, the all eyes are on them, right? It's one thing if you're doing things in a group and everyone's looking at the group or you're on a team. But when you're doing public speaking, usually you're by yourself and all eyes are just on you. Uh, another one. Because um, everyone is there and Make like a mistake and people will know. Yes. Anything you do, good or bad, people will catch it, right? Yeah. So you're you're right in the middle of attention. Anyone else? For other reasons they might be afraid of public speaking, not necessarily them, but in general. Some people are insane. Some people are crazy. That's true. But alright, go ahead. Some people may make fun of them. Okay, people might be afraid of how people are gonna view them and judge them, right? Another one? Because uh, so some people uh, always uh, Using uh, WhatsApp and Facebook. Okay, no, no, this, this is true. Sometimes, right, in almost, I'd say that this is probably the case in almost every single uh, instance where you're going to be in front of a group of people, like right now. You'll have a few people uh, who are on their phones. You'll have a few people who are almost sleeping in the back, right? You have a couple of people who are nodding off. And some of the time, it has nothing to do with you. What I mean by that is they just don't want to be there, they have something else going on in their life, something that's affecting them. But in some cases, you have an influence on how they're acting, okay? And we're going to talk a lot about that, right? Uh, not only in uh, how to get their attention while you're delivering the speech, but also how to prepare properly so people don't get bored. And so people are engaged with whatever you're talking about. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. Really quickly, uh, we have Risco Drummond, he has this famous quote, it says, the mind is a wonderful thing, it starts working the minute you are born and never stops until you get up to speak in public. Um, for a lot of people this is the case, uh, that they, are, they work so well and then they have to get in front of a crowd of people and it's just like, <laughs> right? you just shut down, right? and it's difficult. So we're going to talk about some of those things, okay? So here we go. First of all, why do people hate public speaking? We already went through some of these. Uh, lack of positive experience, being the center of attention, feeling isolated, being judged by an audience, fear of failure, all of which are part of public speaking anxiety, which has four parts. Okay? We're going to be talking about a few of them today and how to overcome them. First one is pre-preparation anxiety. It's just people who they have an assignment 
or they have been told they have to speak in public, and they're just freaked out about the idea, right? And the thing is, is this, the only way you can really get over this is just to eventually get on and say, you know, I can do it, right? And just start, because if you don't at least start your research, start to uh, prepare for it, you can't get over this, right? Uh, but preparation anxiety is actually during the research and preparation uh, part is that while you're doing the, you're thinking about how is it going to go, right? Uh, am I going to have uh, good resources? Are people going to like what I say, right? You have your pre-performance anxiety within usually the first few, the few days before or the 24 hours before your presentation where you're freaking out. They say butterflies in the stomach, all that stuff, right? Or people are freaking out before they actually deliver. And then performance anxiety. Actually when you're in front of the group of people, that you're just, you're freaking out, right? So we're going to talk about a few of these things and how to overcome them, okay? So it's true, you are being judged. Um, and people, as soon as people see you, as soon as they see you, they make judgments, right? Uh, if, whenever, it's, it's part of our nature that when you see a person, you make snap judgments immediately, okay? And that's why the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress, all is important when it comes to addressing a crowd. Go ahead. Sir, when we go, go around in front of a public, we should, uh, our dress should be ironed, we should be neat and clean. Oh, excellent. Well, he, he's taken some of my, uh, my words. Yes, we're going to get to that, inshallah. And actually, some of that we'll talk about next week, inshallah. But yeah, appearance is really important, right? And it doesn't mean you have to wear a tuxedo, right? Uh, or a suit and tie, but you have to look sharp. You have to look like you kind of prepared a little bit for this. It's not like, oh man, what am I going to wear? I got to speak in five minutes, right? And you just grab something and throw it. Don't do that, right? Uh, but inshallah, we're going we're gonna to get to uh, some of that stuff when we get closer to that. But as far as we want to talk more about how to actually prepare, OK? Um, so let's get through this. All right, so some things really quickly that people will, and they will just, as soon as they see you, they'll make impressions on, has to do with your perceived race or ethnicity. Uh, your accent or your dialect, uh, it's true. The way that the words that you say sound coming out of your mouth affect the way that people make judgments about you, right? They might say, oh, English is not his first language. And that's completely fine if it is, right? However, uh, the thing is this, there are certain things that will just go into people's minds that will, they'll start having snap judgments from the beginning. So a lot of these things you have to be able to break down uh, with your, your speaking, which we're going to get into in Shalma, okay? Obviously your style of dress, uh, your body language, we're going to talk a lot about that next week, inshallah. Um, and your relative level of education and intelligence and other physical traits and so on. Anyway, I want to get into the kind of the meat of this, uh, how we are preparing, right? Say so 90% of how well the talk uh, will go is determined before the speaker steps on the platform. Now, any, any responses to this? I'll say it again. 90% of how well the talk will go is determined before the speaker steps on the platform. Before you get in front of that crowd, 90% of it is determined. First of all, do you guys agree with that? Yeah. You're not yeah. sure? Maybe? What do, you, what do you think? What do you think? Go ahead. Because on um, <coughs> presentation or something, you can see it before he presents or say anything from his face. He's afraid or he's uh, not afraid. Nervous. Okay, he might be nervous, might have it, might be his body language. Go ahead, Ahmed. First impression. Okay, just the general first impression he gives on, right? Even the way you come through the door on the stage, just come to the center, right? If you look like you don't know what you're doing, like I did when I first came in here, right? Uh, I'm trying to figure, hey, does this work, right? Uh, can we turn the computer on? Hey, if you're fumbling around like this and you're <laughs> holding your phone like me, and you're doing a bunch of funny stuff, people will catch that, right? But again, as far as how to deliver effectively, we're gonna be talking more about that next week. But uh, it's true. Most of how you're going to do has to do with how you prepare, okay? Uh, and so that's really what I wanna focus on now, okay? So how can I become a better public speaker, okay? So there's some important things you need to figure out before you start. Okay? Now, is this an assignment from school? No. Is this, well, I'm just, <coughs> roll with me, right? Uh, is it something for uh, the Youth International Cafe? You, you've been brought up, you said, hey, Ahmed, you've got to speak in front of a group tonight. Whatever the case is, right? Um, 
not trying to put you on the spot. But, um, you know, what is the purpose? Why are you there? Right? Why are you speaking? Is this something that you have a lot of time to prepare for? Or what is it? Is it a class project? What's going on? So you have to know. Preparing in the right way. Start by answering these questions. <coughs> what is the specific purpose of your speech? All right? <coughs> Generally, when people are doing public speaking and writing for that matter, right, they're doing it for three reasons. One, they're doing it to entertain people. Right? They're up there on the stage or on YouTube, whatever the case is, to do something that entertains people, something that they enjoy. The second thing is to inform, right? To give information, to give ideas and thoughts and things that the audience doesn't already know or to give them more information about su a subject they know a little bit about. And the third one is to persuade them. What's the meaning of persuade? Someone help me out. It's like to prove them, like, make them agree. You're arguing, arguing like, what I think Okay, persuade, to convince the, 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 the audience of your point, right? And we're going to go into to that a little bit, inshallah, right? So, why are you there? What's the purpose? You need to know this before you get in front of the group, right? Before you get in front of your audience, okay? Um, what's your topic? What are you talking about? Uh, if you don't have a clear understanding of what you're talking about, you're not going to do so well, all right? Um, I'm going to talk about this uh, briefly. Um, I say more than anything else, you need to know your subject. If you're talking about Islam, right? Islam is a really, really, really big, broad yeah. thing. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to talk about Islam. Okay, well, if someone, if you're going to talk about Islam, what is it? Are you, are you talking about the religion in general, the five pillars, the belief system, the creed, right? who is Allah? I mean, there are so many things. What are the different uh, aspects of Tawbah? I mean, it's so, it's so broad, you can't say, oh, I'm just going to talk about Islam. Well, what about Islam are you going to talk about? You have to know specific. You start broad and you have to get more specific, okay? Um, so whatever you're going to talk about, whether this is quantum physics or this is uh, something having to do with uh, chemistry or anything, any subject, you need to know your subject inside out. Why? Why, does, why is that important? Go ahead. Because you have to know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> One of the quickest ways to destroy your entire presentation is just, what? Was even without the even without a question before that even before they get to questions. No, that's good. But even before they get to questions, if you are up there and you're supposed to talk about a subject, right? And you're fumbling with your words. You're like, oh, what was that? What do I want to say? Right? Immediately they're going to catch. They're going to see with the words that you're saying or not saying, with your body language. You're going to look frustrated. You're going to look anxious. Ah, oh, what do I do? Right? You look like you have to go to the bathroom. Right? You're kind of dancing around a bit. Right? And the, and the audience can pick up on that really, really, really quickly. Right? We're not going to focus on it so much this, uh, this time because of the short time, but inshallah next week we're going to talk about it a lot, um, is that when it comes to your public speaking, 7% of how well you do has to do with the words you say. 7%. That doesn't mean that the words you say are not important, but the tone, that how you say those words is about 35%, roughly, right? How you deliver. Because you could have something that is so incredibly boring as a topic, but you can make it sound really exciting and you can get the audience really into it. But as a, but, or you can read it like a robot. So on this side of the parabola, on this side, what, and you could just make people just drone out and fall asleep, right? And the other thing, which makes up an even bigger percentage, which is about 50, uh, 53%, is your body language, your eye contact, and that stuff. And those are the things we're gonna really be focused on next week. How to deliver the voice tone when you pause, how to move effectively, and so on, okay? But you need to know, I'll get to you in a second, you need to know your topic inside and out, all right? Now, after you've picked the topic you're gonna talk about, right, before even we get there, after you pick the topic, right, you have to know exactly what you're going to say and, and why you're saying it. We said you're there to inform the people, to tell them something, for example, you're trying to teach someone what is Islam, right? For example, 
or you're trying to entertain them, whether this is make them laugh or you know, make them have certain emotions or just you know, feel happy, right? Or to convince them of something. So you have to know why, because the way you prepare for all of these things is different, right? If you uh, are going to try to uh, persuade a person of something, right? Or inform them, you might be using facts. But your purpose behind using those facts might be different. In one case, you're just trying to let them know certain information. Whereas in the other one, you're trying to use this information to convince them of a, an opinion that you might have. Right? So with whatever topic you're going to have, make sure that you know it really well and that you've done enough research. I cannot stress this enough. Most of the time, when they say 90% is determined before you step on stage, it asks, when people fail in public speaking, when people are dancing around and look like they have to pee, all this stuff, it has to do with them not knowing what they're talking about well enough. Now, don't memorize. I'm not saying that you shouldn't memorize certain things, but don't try to memorize a speech. You type up a whole speech, and then you try to memorize it word for word, and then you throw away the paper, and you're like, what do I Because the, the audience, one, one thing is when you do that, it just sounds like you're reading because you're just trying to connect back to what you wrote and then you're just trying to like scan through it and just read. So it's just like one of those robotic voices, right? Yeah. Audiences don't like that. It's not natural. What you should memorize are the important things, the structure that you're talking about, right? So you should talk about, for example, you're open. I'm going to come back to this in a second. All right. Now, back up real quickly, if you have a speech and you want people to show up, have a good title, right? Have something that actually sounds interesting, right? Uh, something that's going to captivate their attention. Um, as far as your opening, right? Your opening, your introduction, you want to have something that is interesting for your audience, that grabs them, that hooks them in, right? If you are not doing something from the very beginning, as soon as you walk on the stage with your presence, and then as soon as you open your mouth, that hooks them in and gets them interested, you might have lost them for the whole speech, right? So you want to do something that's going to grab them and pull them in from the beginning, right? So have, it says grab the audience's attention, right? Um, so you have to just make sure that this is very strong, okay? Um, it's important that in your opening, you don't leave any doubts about what the topic is. Inform the audience of what you're talking about. Tell them what you're going to tell, uh, tell them about what you're going to talk about. Give the audience kind of a roadmap of what you're going to do. Okay? You don't want to leave them in the dark. Okay? So if you're going to talk about uh, a specific uh, uh, type of thing with uh, algebra or whatever, make it clear to them what you're going to be talking about. Just because it's math doesn't mean it has to be boring. Right? It can be exciting if you talk about it in the right way. But you, like I said, you have to know what you're saying. Okay? Uh, the body of your, uh, of, of what your, your, your talk is the most important, obviously. This is just your intro and your conclusion. But in the body, this is really the meat of what you're talking about. This is where you're giving any facts you need to give, right? We're giving all the important information. When I'm saying don't memorize, I don't mean don't memorize anything. What you should do is memorize how you're going to introduce your topic, and then bullet points, main points. And then underneath these, any sub points that, like for example, facts, you want to include that are important, right? So that basically, you could have a post-it note, right? Or two, or maximum three, right? But you should be able to do it with one. That you can say everything you need to say based on this, just using keywords. That you know your subject so well that you just see the keyword and you're like, boom, I know what I'm going to talk about, right? So, for example, I don't have it up on the screen, but right before I came in here, there's a few things that I did not include in the slides I wanted to make sure I mentioned. So all I did is I just wrote a couple lines. With most of what I wrote was just a couple <laughs> words, but because I know I said, hey, I want to talk about that point, it, what it does is just like when you're memorizing Qur'an, right? And you hit the end of the verse, because you've memorized the beginning of the next verse, it just clicks. You say, okay, it, it ended like this, and you just jump into the next one. Same thing with this, is that you don't want to be trying to memorize word for word everything you're saying, but you want to know the sequence 
What's the meat, right, of these, of these main points we're going to be talking about, right? Also, with this, it's important because if you're, especially if you're trying to convince someone of something, you have to know what are the, the, your main hard-hitting evidences you're using to try to convince them, right? Uh, what, what are the statistics you're using? What are the details you're using, okay? Um, another thing that's important uh, is, let me see where I have it. Here we go. Know how much time you have. This is really important because what will happen is if you don't, you will run out of time. Like I am, that's happening to me right now. I have like six minutes, seven minutes, right? Um, I thought I had about an hour, so I'm trying to just cram right now, all right? Um, so, no, I, I know, it's, it's fine, Michelle. Okay, um, so the thing is, is know how much time you have before you get on stage. So don't do what I did today, where I was like, I, as soon as I saw Altaf in the, you know, in the hallway, I was like, how much time do I have? He's like, about 45 minutes. I'm like, okay, let me try it. Now I'm, right now, I'm trying to include the important information I want to get to you in this time. Don't do it, right? And I'm supposed to be, I'm teaching you about this, and I'm saying don't do what I'm doing, but I'm being honest, right? I'm just, it's important. Know how much time you have. If you have a 15 minute time slot, Right? You need to rehearse the 15 minutes. So you're including your intro, right? uh, what you're, uh, you're including your body, which you're spending most of your time in, and you're including your, your conclusion right? in that time. And you designate, you know, give or take a minute or half a minute, certain amount of time. So for example, if we go back a few slides and we saw, right? we talked about our opening, and you have 15 minutes, right? You want to finish your opening, whatever you're going to use to hook them in the first minute or two minutes, max, right? That you've let the audience know what you're talking about, you've got them interested, you hook them into the story, and then you jump into your body, the most important information, right? Then at the, you want to make sure that you give enough time there, but you, don't want to, you won't want to go over because then you can't have a good conclusion in which you're summarizing the main points that you told them. And this is the thing that really kind of makes or breaks uh, uh, you know, a good presentation. That you were able to convey certain information to, the, to your audience, and then you're able to summarize the most important points as a conclusion, right? Because that's what the last thing that you say is the thing that the audience is walking out of the room with, right? So you use the body to build up your credibility, to build up giving all the, you know, whatever main information, statistics uh, you're giving them. And then in your conclusion, you are summarizing the main points, and this is why you should, you know, believe this, or whatever the case is, all right? Now, going back to what we were talking about, make sure you know how much information you're trying to convey. If you have a 15 minute slot, plan for 15 minutes. You have an hour, plan for an hour. Don't over inform. What is this? That you're trying to cram too much information into a short amount of time. That you only have such amount of information you can fit in that time period, right? And you are trying to put way too much. So then you start talking really, really fast and trying to include, right? And you're going to lose your audience. It's be it is better to say less and do it well and effectively and the audience grabs it and understands it well than trying to do too much and then and I've seen this in khutbas and, uh, and talks and even looking back in some videos I've done right from you know a couple years ago there's sometimes I was giving a khutbah or giving a talk and I try to put too much information too many hadith too many ayat and they're kind of all over the place so even though I tried to bring them back you know on a main subject because I tried to put too much in a short period of time if someone was asked, what was the main point of that khutbah? People might be scratching their heads. You know, he mentioned this and mentioned that. No, it should be clear. If someone, it's just like a movie, right? If you just finished watching a movie and someone says, what was that about? You shouldn't be like, uh, um, there was some guy, he did something. I can't really remember. Yeah, you don't want that, right? Same thing with your talk. You want it to be like, it was about this and this, and said, okay, so what were the main things he said? The person should be able to list the main points that you talked about. If we could turn the side conversations down, that'd be greatly appreciated. All right, okay, so that's important. Likewise, don't under-inform. What is meaning of this? That you think you have enough information, but then you finish it with it in the first five minutes, and you have another 10 minutes where you kind of just stand up here looking stupid, right? 
where you, ha you don't fill the time properly because you didn't plan, okay? So when it comes to all this stuff, as they say, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. We're not saying, like I said, with memorizing, it's not that you don't memorize anything, but don't try to memorize word for word. What you should try to memorize is the sequence you're going through, the more main points you're trying to talk about. Uh, depending on the circumstances, it may or may not be appropriate to use uh, kind of a helping card, right? Um, but even usually, uh, you know, in most circumstances, it's okay. But in some circumstances, you can't even have this. You have to know everything, right, up here. Which means that you have to practice it and practice it and practice it and practice it. Luckily, most people, they have one of these now. And these have uh, cameras and they have uh, videotapes and stuff on it. Uh, sometimes people have a camera at home or so on. It's a really good idea to film yourself while you're practicing. Film, film, film. Multiple times. Rehearsing. And then play it back. Because one of the best ways to check out where you're making mistakes is not trying to catch them while you're doing it. It's watch it again and see. Guys, please, I don't have a lot of time. If you could stop talking, that'd be appreciated. Right? Watch yourself. I, every time I look at videos of myself, and even if this goes online and I watch it, I'm going to catch mistakes. I, for sure, I will. For sure. Right? That's just how it works. But the thing is, the more you're aware of the mistakes that uh, you're making, especially uh, frequently, uh, the more uh, likely you'll be able to recognize when you s are just about to do it and you can catch yourself. And, th and the more that you practice this before you actually get on stage to perform or to do whatever you're doing, uh, you know, that's good. So rehearse as much as you can. I can't overemphasize this. Know your subject. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to practice something and not have anything to practice. Make sure you have good concrete uh, outline with all those main po points you want to talk about, right? And don't leave anything out, right? Make sure you include all those main things. And memorize that sequence, right? So that you know it from the back of your head. And if someone takes that paper away from you and says, what, you know, what are you going to talk about and what's the order and so on, you can just knock it off to them, right? But after you, you have that down, then rehearse as much as you can, okay? This is really important. Uh, I think there was a couple other things that I saw. Um, I said also, who's your audience? This is important. Um, why do you think knowing, I don't mean knowing the individuals in the audience, but having some idea about who's in your audience, why is that important? Go ahead, Ahmed. Like what kind of interest do they have? Okay, maybe if they're, do they know anything about your topic, right? For example, are, are they coming there because it's a science fair? And everyone's like really into you know science or whatever, and so you know you already have this background about where they're coming from, or are you completely in the dark? But try to find out, uh, even if you don't know anyone in the audience, they're all strangers. Try to get an idea about their background, meaning what? I'm not talking about necessarily not their race, but uh, their background as far as their age, maybe their education level. I don't mean going around and giving a survey. I mean, talk to the organizers and I say, generally, who are the types of people that are going to come? Right? Go ahead. And we can see by the uniforms. Okay, yeah, and of course, by the way the people dress and so on, there's certain things you can see. But it's important to try to find this out before you get in front of them. Why? Why do you think it's important to have an idea of who you're going to be speaking to before you actually get up to speak to them? Go ahead. Because then, because then you want to be able to prepare for specifically them. Okay, yeah. Um, now the thing is, is this, you can talk about uh, the same subject to multiple different types of audiences, right? To older people, younger people, right? Uh, you know, people of different uh, ethnic backgrounds, whatever the case is, as long as they understand your language, right? However, the way you deliver it and even the words that you use, right? And certain things you might include or might not include, right? It's important to know your audience because this affects this. Because if you're going to be talking to an adult audience, right, you can talk about certain subjects, right, that are, it's understand that this is okay to talk about, right? But if you're trying to include certain subjects and you're talking to a group of third graders, right, it might not be appropriate for them, right? And so you have to know who you're, who you're talking to, okay? Because how you're going to, you don't want it to be that you prepare this awesome speech, right? 
for a group of teenagers and you get up and it's a bunch of old people and you are planning to include certain jokes and act in a certain way and all of a sudden it's people who's your grandfather's age and it's like because the way that you deliver and how it's received it's going to be completely different likewise if you have a group of business executives the, even the way you dress and how you speak to them and the way you move will be different than if you're talking to a group of friends, right? So it's a good idea to know who you're talking about, right? Um, like we said, know your time constraints. And will you be using visual aids like me today? I knew I had my PowerPoint, right? I was hoping it was going to work. <laughs> Make sure you practice this before you get in the room, even before the audience gets there, right? Make sure you run through a couple of things. If you're going to be using uh, a remote to change slides, right? Make sure it has batteries, right? Check all of these things, right? Another thing that's important is know your space. Are you going to be in a giant auditorium filled with 5,000 people? Right? Or are you going to be, you know, on a small stage, big stage? Do you have room to move? Are people sitting down in chairs? You can walk amongst them. And depending on what you're speaking about, there are certain things that you could do that might be appropriate. And in other cases, it won't be. So know your space, yeah. right? Know your audience, know your space, know your subject matter. Okay? Very important. All right. Let's, whatever we say. Uh, knowing the size of your audience, presentation space, current knowledge of the topic. This is important. This is really important. Like I said, I'm just rushing through this. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, this is something, and I'll, this is one of the worst things to do, to tell when you're trying to teach someone something not to do that you're doing, but don't do this. You probably notice that I'm speaking really fast, right? We're going to talk more about that next week, inshallah, with how to deliver. Right? How to deliver a good speech, how to act, how to, to move around the space. But when you're talking fast, right, uh, it might be fine for you because you know, you know what you're saying. But for the audience, it might be like just flying over their heads. Okay? And I apologize if I've been doing this tonight. Okay? Um, but try to slow down. Take a breath. <sighs> yeah? Um, relax. Uh, really, it'll help a lot. Uh, it is better that you miss a couple points and you pause effectively and you give a really spot on awesome presentation than you try to include like all of these things in there and rushing and you're speeding up really, really fast or whatever and the audience is just like, what is going on, right? <laughs> They feel like they're just like in a car and there's no brakes and just like, and much, much of what you're saying and trying to convey to them is just going over their heads. Another thing that's important is make sure you know the audience's current knowledge of the topic, or at least you have a good idea of it. You don't want to be talking about the details of quantum physics when a person has trouble with basic, you know, uh, theory, right, when it comes to science, right? And if you are talking about a big, really complicated subject that most people don't have a lot of knowledge of, try to explain it with words and in a way that the person can understand, right? Don't be, also another thing is having a general I idea about your audience, understand that the words that you say, if they are really big elaborate words that are not very uh, commonly used, except you know, amongst certain people, and you're using all these big words, even though you're speaking the same language, people might not get it. They're less like, what did that guy just say, right? And it'll, it'll affect the way you're received by your audience. So it's important uh, that if you are using big words that you, you explain it and that it's related to your, your topic, okay? No problem, Chuck. Let's see. Um, organization structure. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them, then tell them what you told. Yeah, here we go. All right, what's this? Tell them what you're going to tell them, all right? So in the beginning, you have your intro. You tell them what you're going to talk about. Then tell them that thing that you told them you're going to tell them. All right? And then at the end, in your conclusion, you tell them what you told them. Is that complicated? No, you got it, right? Is you just introduce the topic. Hey, guys, tonight I'm going to be talking about this, whatever. Then you talk about that thing. And then you go through the main points that you talked about. OK? Pretty simple. All right? Uh, what else? Uh, make sure everything has a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, don't, uh, don't start something and stop in the middle of it. Or start a story and then just stop without it being clear why you're doing that. 
Uh, it, there's, no, there's nothing worse than you are talking and you're in the middle of something and you just switch topics and the people are just like, what just happened, right? It completely throws people off. So make sure if you're transitioning that it's clear that you're ending one thing and you're moving to the next, all right? Uh, ask yourself if you are meeting the audience's expectations. Another thing is this. Pay attention to your audience. Um, not just, don't just think about how you are doing, but look at your audience. Don't just think about, am I messing up? Am I speaking well? How's my voice? How do I look? All of this me, me, me only, right? Because it's important that you're conscious of how you're doing, but make sure you are conscious of how you're being received by your audience. If most people, you see them checking the time, playing Angry Birds, right? Talking to each other, right? Um, more likely than not, it's because there's something that's lacking in your presentation that you're not prepared or you're not speaking loud enough or you're not getting their attention, right? Um, and they're going to be doing something else, okay? So to be honest, when you have a really spot on, well prepared, well delivered uh, speech, you're not going to see a lot of people sleeping or using their phones, okay? But in other circumstances, you will. So pick up on that, right? And if you see people, and as, a, as a teacher, I'm a teacher in one of the schools here. Um, when I see students who are kind of like getting off track, I literally go up to them, right? And I'm saying like, so Mustafa, how, you know, what, what do you think about this topic? And I'll ask him questions. So, of course, you have to know the space that you're in. Can you actually walk into the audience? Are they in chairs like we have here? Are they in, right? But you could be like, you know, uh, you could just by directing your attention and your eyes in one direction towards some people, the other people will start looking in that way too, right? And so you'll have the people who kind of might be not be focusing, all of a sudden everyone's like looking at them and, right? The main thing is this, is that you want to keep people in. Now, if you're doing everything right and people are still looking away, people are still sleeping, so then this might be just their issue, right? You can't please everyone. Not everyone is going to think you had the best day ever. You're always going to have that one guy in the front or the middle row who's just like giving you a hard time or he's like, it's just not working for him. You will always have some audience members and sometimes you'll have people who actually make trouble or who interrupt. You just have to learn how to keep going. Right? Will you make mistakes? Guaranteed you will make mistakes. For sure you will. But you have to learn how to just roll over that and keep going. Now, one of the biggest problems is when people try to memorize word for word their, 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 their speech and then they get distracted or someone yells or someone farts, right? That distracts right, you from what you're talking about. And all of a sudden you're like, what am I, like, where was I? And you're trying to go back to where you ended. But if you know the sequence and you know what you were talking about, you can just pause and you can get right back into it. So that's another reason why that's important, OK? Um, obviously, knowing the time. So this is important. Um, it's helpful to make sure that if you have 15 minutes, that you have some way to track time, OK? So whether this is you have a, a, you know, uh, there's a, a clock on the back of the room, or it's not good to be doing what I'm doing, but it's just because I didn't have a lot of time to prepare um, today. So I'm now checking the time because I have to end in the next like three minutes, right? Um, but have a way you can check your time and how much time you have left, right? And, right? So it's good, obviously, that you can get it down with your practicing and your rehearsing. If you have 15 minutes, that you rehearse so that by 15 minutes, as soon as the buzzer goes off, boom, you're done. Right? But this is tough. It's not easy to do this. You can do it with a lot of practice that you spend the right amount of time uh, on each subject and you can finish on time. <coughs> but for most people, it's helpful to have someone who is working with you who can be like, you got five minutes, you got three minutes, you got one minute, right? So you can, who's in the audience, who's not going to distract the rest of the audience, be like, hey, you have five minutes left, right? Because that will completely destroy. Uh, everything that you're doing and completely distract you and the audience. So you don't want that. You still want it to be subtle, maybe someone in the front row who can hold up, uh, or cards, maybe color-coded cards. You know the meaning. It means 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever. So that's important. Um, I have to wrap up. Uh, like I said, visual element. No, if you're going to be using a PowerPoint, know how to use PowerPoint. It's important. Uh, know how to start the presentation, how to switch back and forth between slides. Um, 
and so on. Uh, know what, if maybe you plan to have a PowerPoint presentation, make sure that the place that they have a projector, they have a screen, right? Um, another thing that's important, we're going to talk more about this next week is don't turn your back to the audience, like ever, right? Um, don't be like, so, and today I'm going to talk about this thing, right? People don't like to look at your back usually, right? It's usually not that exciting. So they want to see your face. The face has a lot. Uh, that it can convey, even without words. So make sure that you're facing the audience. If you are having to face the back, it's just because you went into the audience, you turned around, right? And you just got back up on stage. But if you're like cool enough to be able to kind of like do this backwards thing and keep the attention on the audience, just don't try to go up steps because you'll fall, right? Um, but uh, just have a good idea of that. Try to always face your audience and connect with them. And we're going to be talking about more about how to connect with uh, the audience, how to talk with them, how to use your voice, how to use your body language more next week. Um, anything else? Pre-performances? Yeah, so anyway, that was, that was basically the most important stuff. Let me see if there's anything else that I missed. Um, and that's it. Here we go. Know your honest. Space equipment. Oh yeah, two last things. And I just added this to my own. It's not in my slides. Sleep. Sleep. Like, if you have a presentation tomorrow morning, sleep well. Like, don't try to be like, oh, I'm going to keep practicing until like 1 in the morning. And then you're like seeing things and like, you know. <laughs> and then you get up and then you look like you're drunk and you're in front of the, 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 the class. Right? No, it's not good, really. People can, have you ever seen someone, I, I'm sure you have, Sunday morning, coming back from the weekend. It's probably going to happen a couple days from now, right? You go to school and you see kids are like, <laughs> right? Sometimes you might even have a teacher comes in, hey class. <laughs> and he looks like he's just gonna like pass out while standing up. Yeah, don't be that guy, right? People can catch on. If you have to give a presentation early in the morning, make sure you're up two hours before the presentation. So that, and make sure you wash your face, you're dressed well, so that peep, you look like you're awake and you sound like you're awake. When you people first wake up, so usually they have some, like, something in their throat. And they're like, no. Right? Make sure you have enough time. Right? Uh, another thing. Eat right. And I'm not only talking about breakfast. Even the night before. Don't try something new that you've never had before. You don't know how it's going to affect your stomach right before you give a presentation. Because it might not end well. Okay? You might be gassy. Right? This is really embarrassing if you're farting on stage, especially if, especially if you have a microphone, okay? Be like, oh, what was that? Right? Don't do that. Um, also, you don't want to come on stage and look like you're about to die, right? Not good. Don't do that. So yeah, um, eat something that, you know, generally doesn't, like, make you feel like you want to, like, rip your stomach out of your body. Um, and that has to do with the night before as well as that morning. Eat a good breakfast. I know people always say this. It's the same type of things that before tests, right? Yeah. Sleep well and, and eat well. And even for public speaking and for any type of performance, this is also important. So that's it. I went over a little bit. I apologize, guys. Sorry about that. But inshallah, if you're available next week, inshallah, I'll be here and we'll be talking about how not only just to, after you've prepared effectively, how to deliver an effective presentation. Shall I hope you benefited tonight? Thank you guys. Barakhofiq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.